So let us start with the diseases of the external auditory canal. So uh, we will start with we will start with the boil of the external auditory canal. So, the boil of the external canal, by definition, we know that it is the staphylococcal infection of the hair follicle. The boil anywhere in the body is always the infection of the hair follicle, which is caused by the bacteria that is the staphylococcus. If we'll go for the clinical features, there is intense pain, number one. Why there is pain? As I told you before that the skin of the external artery canal is closely adherent to the cartilage and the bone of the external artery canal. So there is no space. So whenever there is the staphylococcal infection, there is the accumulation of pus in between the external artery canal and the skin and it will cause the intense pain. Now it is, this pain is also aggravated by the movement of pinna. Why it is aggravated by the movement of the pinna? Because the cartilage of the pinna is in continuation with the cartilage of the external auditory pinna. So definitely it is a one and the same cartilage of the external auditory canal and the pinna. So whenever you move the pinna, it means that you are moving the cartilage of the external artery canal. And by this movement, the pain is activated. There is also the pain on opening of the mouth. Why there is pain in the opening of the uh, mouth? Pain on opening of the mouth because the temporomandibular joint, the roof of the temporomandibular joint is formed by the floor of the cartilage of the external auditory canal. So definitely, this again is in continuation with the temporomandibular joint. So there is the pain on opening of the mouth. There is conductive deafness. Why there is conductive deafness? The whole of the external canal is filled with the pus and with the swelling. So due to the fullness of the external canal, there is the there is no conduction of sound and this will cause the conductive deafness. 
whenever this uh, <clears throat> boil bursts, it causes definitely the discharge of pus. There is fever, there is tenderness. When you press the tragus, it will cause the tenderness. And there is the, if you see the external atrial canal, you will see the foam nodular swelling into the external auditory canal. Okay, one minute. So finally, if there is any query, this is more important that your question, I will take your questions in the end of my lecture. So be patient. Okay. I will take the questions in the end of the lecture. Rusha, you lower your hand, please. You lower your hand, please. So now, this is the extra artery canal, which is totally filled with this swelling. And this swelling is called the this swelling or this swelling. This is called the boil. Now, boil is uh, in which portion of the ear? Boil is present. You know that external artery canal has got two parts. One is the cartilaginous part and one is the bony part. So, in which part this boil will be? It will be in the cartilaginous portion of the external artery canal. Why in the cartilaginous portion? Why not in the bony portion? Because uh, can you see these hairs? These hairs are always present into the cartilaginous part of the external artery canal only. Can you see these hairs? These hairs, these are also present in the only present into the cartilaginous part of the external auditory canal. They are not present in the bony part. So, as far as this is the infection of the hair follicle, so if the hairs are not present, it means that the the, the infection will not be present into the bony part. This will be only in the cartilaginous part. And this much swelling. Definitely, it closes whole of the extra artery canal, so it causes the conductive type of the hearing loss. Now, what will be the treatment? We can give the antibiotics. Which type of antibiotic we will prescribe? We will prescribe only those antibiotics which are sensitive to the staphylococcus. Those antibiotics are used which are sensitive to the staphylococcus. And you can go for analgesics because there is a pain and inflammation. So you can go for analgesics for the pain and anti-inflammatory drugs for the inflammation. You can use the ecthymol glycerin wick. What is wick? Wick is a small piece of uh, uh, gauze. A small piece of gauze is formed which is put into the ecthymol glycerin. And this small piece of gauze mixed with the ectomol glycerin is put into the external auditory canal. Now, what is ectomol glycerin? Ectomol is the antibacterial agent and it will decrease the infection. And glycerin is a hygroscopic in nature. So, hygroscopic means it will absorb the water which is present into that portion. Of the HRT canal. So when it will absorb the water, it will definitely decrease the swelling as well as the pain. And if the boil is very large, you can go for the incision and the drainage. You just incise the boil and remove whole of the pus. And after removing the pus, you can put the wick of the ethanol glycerin. Again, you will get the analgesics and so this is all about uh, your uh, boil of the extractic canal.
and I will take your uh, questions in the end of my lecture. So don't please raise your hands. The second is the pre auricular sinus. What is the sinus? Sinus is the tract between the external environment and the internal mucosa. If there is a tract between the external environment and the mucosa, this tract is known as the sinus. And pre means in front, auricular means auricle. So in front of the auricle, there is a tract between the external environment and the mucous membrane, which is known as the pre-auricular sinus. By definition, it is due to the defect of the fusion, the first and second bronchial arch. When we'll go for the development of the ear, the first and second bronchial arch will fuse together and this will form the auricle. So if there is a defect in the fusion of the first and second bronchial arch, it will cause the three auricular sinus. Now in this sinus, the external opening is present between the tragus and the crust helix. The external opening is between the tragus and the crust helix. Usually this tract has got no symptoms, mind it. But only the symptoms will develop when the tract gets infected. When someone take bath in the dirty water, that dirty water may cause the infection into the tract. Or any cause which causes the infection into the tract, it will give rise to the symptoms. Now here you can see that this is the opening, very clear opening. This is a keras helix, this is the crust helix, and this is the portion of the tragus. So this opening is present between this keras helix and the portion of the tragus. This is the crust helix, this is tragus. So this opening is present between the crust helix and the tragus, and this is called the pre-auricular sinus. Symptoms, if there is the infection and there are the symptoms, then definitely there will be the pain, there will be the swelling at the opening of the, this sinus, there will be the redness and there will be the fussy discharge from the external, sorry, sorry from the uh, sinus tract. So pain, swelling, redness and discharge. These four are the main symptoms for the pre auricular sinus. How will you treat it? The first important thing is that we should treat the infection first because we have to complete, uh, we need the complete surgical excision of the tract. And until and unless we don't remove the tract, this infection will not resolve. So for the complete surgical excision, the first thing is to treat the infection because during infection, it will go for the surgery, we will increase the infection and that infection may extend into the different tissues of the ear. So in order to uh, make it a complete surgical excision, you will have to treat the infection first. So treatment is to treat the infection first and there is a complete surgical excision. Now again, <clears throat> this is the, this is the, opening. This is the crust helix, this is the tragus, in between is this opening, known as the pre-auricular sinus. You know that this, there is a swelling and uh, there was the infection, swelling, redness which has been treated and now there is no redness, no swelling, but this tract is present from here up to here. Right? So this is the basically the tract which we have to remove. So we give the incision third incision all around this portion of the swelling and all around the tract. Now, there are two incisions, one all around the tract and all around the infected cyst or infected swelling which is present into the, uh, in between this crust helix and the tragus. 
now we will open these two areas and we will make we can see that there is a track in between this 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 was the portion of the infection can you see the redness because this was a portion of the infection and uh, and the this was just here was the the portion of the preauricular sinus so we will meet it both together we can see that there is a track clear cut seam track in the skin and in the soft tissues and we will remove this track so we have met these two things together one thing second thing by incision we have made it one thing so we have removed this track which was present here this one track we removed the track and then we will make the stitches together so we have made two things in one thing by making this incision and we have removed this type of the tissue along with the track so the preauricular i repeat it once again the preauricular sinus the infected area the incision given at both the areas we have make it one we have seen the track we have removed the track given the stitches and this track has been given the third is the photomycosis and uh, what is otomycosis? Otomycosis is the fungal infection of the external periphery canal. So, by definition, it is the fungal infection of the external periphery canal. What are the predisposing factors which causes this fungal infection to develop? One and the most important thing is the swimming into the dirty water if you are going to swim into the swimming pool and that swimming pool is not properly uh, uh, maintained and it uh, contains a dirty water then there is the chances that when you will swim in that dirty water it will give rise to the automycosis or the human infection the second is the discharge in the otitis media whenever there is a what is otitis media is there is infection of the middleware cavity so whenever there is infection of the middle ear cavity, the pus will extrude from the middle ear cavity into the external body canal. And if this pus has not been cleaned up properly, then if the discharge is always present into the external body canal, definitely it will decrease the immunity of the surrounding tissues of the external body canal. And when the immunity is decreased, the chances of the fungal infections are always more. So there are two predisposing factors, the swimming in the dirty water and discharge in the otitis media. Now causative organisms, what are the different causative organisms which give rise to the, uh, this uh, fungal infection of the external PKR? One is the Aspergillus niger, the Aspergillus albus, the Aspergillus flavius. The Aspergillus niger is very, very common photomycosis or the fungal infection present into the external of the canal. Albus is very rare, flavus is very rare. And the third and fourth thing is Candidia albicans. This is also very common. So, two things are common Aspergillus niger and the Candidia albicans. Aspergillus albus and Aspergillus flavus, they are very, very rare. And at least I have not seen the albus and flavus still in my life. I have seen the Aspergillus nagger and the Candida albicans very well. What could be the clinical features? Whenever there is a fungal infection, there is always the itching. The fungus has got the property which gave rise itching to the HRT canal or anywhere anywhere in the in the body if there is a fungus there is the itching which is very common clinical feature so there is itching into the XRT canal there is blockage into the XRT canal because the fungus ball is present into the XRT canal which will uh, close the XRT canal and it will cause the blockage so itching blockage secondly bacterial infection will occur because whenever there is the fungal infection 
there is the decreased immunity. Whenever there is infection, there is decreased immunity, either it is bacterial or fungal. But fungal infection has got more property to decrease the immunity into the surrounding tissues. So due to the decreased immunity, there is secondary bacterial infection. And whenever there is infection, it will cause the pain and the discharge. So first of all, there is itching and there is blockage. And whenever there is a secondary bacterial infection, it will give rise to pain and a discharge. And when we'll see the extraordinary canal, if you see the extraordinary canal, there is blotting paper like mass present into the extraordinary canal. I'll show you. Now, this is just like a blotting paper. You can see the whitish areas, the blackish areas. Whitish areas, blackish areas. Whitish areas, blackish areas. So there is a mixture of the whitish areas and blackish areas into the extraordinary canal. And this gives rise to the blotting paper like uh, figure, blotting paper like mass, which is present into the extraordinary canal. And when this blotting paper like mass is present again into the extraordinary canal, it means with the itching, itching, it means that there is the orthomyosis. How will you treat it? Now the first thing is that uh, you have to clear the extraordinary canal because until and unless this uh, fungal ball has not been uh, removed, there is no good result of any treatment into the fungus because the fungus will multiply, number one. Number two, it will go into it will send the pseudopodia into the skin. So when it gives the pseudopodia into the skin, it is very important that you have to remove the whole of the those pseudopodias. Otherwise, it will go on increasing, increasing, and increasing, and will involve the whole of the extraordinary canal. So the first thing is that you have to remove the fungus. How will you remove? We will suck the fungus with a machine, which is known as the suction machine. So with the suction machine, we will remove the whole of the fungus. After removing this fungus, we will give the anti what anti fungal lotion. So this is the clotrimazole lotion. This clotrimazole lotion is the anti fungal lotion. So one is the suction, one is the clotrimazole lotion, which is the anti fungal. And as far as there was a secondary bacterial infection, so definitely we will treat the secondary bacterial infection. So how will you treat the secondary bacterial infection? Definitely you will give the antibiotic, which is sensitive. According to the sensitivity of the infection, you will give the antibacterial or antibiotic. So I repeat it once again. The first thing is to remove the fungus by suction, antifungal clotrimazole lotion, and the antibacterial antibiotics to treat the secondary bacterial infection. Okay, I'm Is there any question? Yes, sir. Is there any question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. You can you can put the question now. If there is any question, you can put the question. Any question, sir, please? Any question? Yes, sir. sir okay. If there's no question, then it's okay. Thank you very much. Sir, sir, question is, sir.
सर आपने बताया था कि बॉयल में जो है ना माउथ खोलने से मतलब पेन होता है वो क्यों होता है सर रिपीट कीजिएगा क्या होता है बेटा फिर से रिपीट करो सर ओपनिंग ऑफ द माउथ से पेन होता है बॉयल में आपने बताया था जी जी क्यों होता है वो रिपीट कीजिए अच्छा देखें जो एक्शन आर्टरी कैनाल का जो कार्टिलेज है तो ये बॉयल ये कार्टिलेज में होता है ना अब एक्शन आर्टरी के ना There is a movement into the action auditory canal cartilage. It will yes. stimulate the nerve endings, and these nerve endings will cause the pain. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Any sir, other question? Sir, आपने बताया कि sir आपने बताया कि pain aggravated by movement of pinna. जी जी. Sir, ये भी थोड़ी तो कीजिएगा. ये तो मैंने अभी बताया. अभी मैंने repeat yes, किया. The so, same I have repeated it for the third time. Next question. Yes. सर सर जो आपने बॉयल के ट्रीटमेंट में एस्थमोल ग्लिसरीन लिख बताया था उससे रिपीट करिएगा थोड़ा यस सर एक्टमोल ग्लिसरीन के दो चीजें हैं एक्टमोल ग्लिसरीन में वन इज एक्टमोल वन इज ग्लिसरीन एक्टमोल इज एंटीबैक्टीरियल एक्ट एज एंटीबायोटिक एंड ग्लिसरीन इज हाइग्रोस्कोपिक इट विल डिक्रीज द स्वेलिंग एंड पेन सो एक्टमोल ग्लिसरीन का विक कम इसलिए डालते हैं कि दो चीजें एक साथ हो जाए एंटीबैक्टीरियल भी है और स्वेलिंग को भी कम करता है ठीक है जी सर विक विक सर विक को थोड़ा एक्सप्लेन कीजिएगा आपने विक का कुछ बताया था वो थोड़ा सा एक्सप्लेन कीजिएगा विक ये है कि स्मॉल पीस ऑफ गॉस छोटा सा गॉस का पीस जो अंदर कान में चला जाए एक्सट्रैक्टरी के डाल में वो स्मॉल पीस ऑफ गॉस इट विल बी पुट इनटू द एक्टमोल ग्लिसरीन एंड देन इट विल बी टू द एक्सट्रैक्टरी इसको बोलते हैं विक और सर सर ऑटोमाइकोसिस में जो है सेकेंडरी बैक्टीरियल इन्फेक्शन हर बार होगा या मतलब इज इट नेसेसरी कि हर बार ही ये इन्फेक्शन साथ एसोसिएटेड हो उसके नहीं नहीं हर बार नहीं होगा जब भी आपकी इम्यूनिटी लो होगी तो बैक्टीरियल इन्फेक्शन होगा ठीक है अगर okay, अगर बैक्टीरियल इन्फेक्शन होगा तो पेन होगा और डिस्चार्ज होगा अगर बैक्टीरियल इन्फेक्शन नहीं होगा तो पेन और डिस्चार्ज नहीं होगा फिर सिर्फ कंडक्टिव डेफिनेस होगी इचिंग होगी सही थैंक यू सर सर जी सर हमें ये डिजीज बस इतनी सी पढ़नी है बुक में तो बहुत सारी लिखी हुई है जो मैं बता रहा हूँ वही पढ़नी है बस ओके सर डिजीज तो आगे चलेंगे ना अभी तो चलेंगे आगे अभी तो आज तो ये तीन बताई है ना फिर जो नेक्स्ट लेक्चर आएगा तीन चार उसमें बताएंगे बताएंगे सब आपको ओके सर एनी अदर क्वेश्चन ओके थैंक यू ओके सर थैंक यू